This workshop's on configuring destinations and today we're looking at Google BigQuery. Uh, we'll start by looking at what Google BigQuery is. It's running on Google Cloud Platform, it's a platform as a service, um, and BigQuery is a database. Uh, you can interact with it as a web service and an API, uh, and you can have billions of rows uh, of data in tables which you can query. We're going to use this with the DataSift platform, getting the DataSift platform to send interactions that match a filter into Google BigQuery. Let's go through some of the uh, terminology first for Google BigQuery. Uh, at the top level we have projects. Um, and a project in Google Cloud Platform can have uh, multiple types of service in it. In our case we're going to just use Google BigQuery. And within the project is where you configure uh, billing and authentication. In the example I'm going to show you, I've already created a project and I've assigned billing information to it. And the information we need about that project to give to the DataSift platform is the identifiers for that project. So there's a project number that we're going to use. The next level we have data sets. So within a project we have a, a Google BigQuery data set and we can create as many of these data sets as we want and then we can reference a data set as a destination in the DataSift platform. Uh, within the data set you can have multiple tables. Um, so the, 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 the BigQuery data itself is held in tables and there is a, a, a table schema which is um, the way it defines the different output fields from the interactions that match your filter. And that schema is automatically derived from the, the JSON objects in the stream of interactions. So we only have to create the data set and the, the DataSift platform will create the tables for us. Uh, jobs are, are actions which are executed by Google BigQuery. So for example, if we make a query on a table for some particular records that match the attributes that we that we define, then that would be, be a job. They're synchronous uh, and some of them, depending on the complexity, can take quite a long time to finish. So the first part is configuring Google BigQuery with the appropriate configuration for DataSift to be able to send the data into it. So the first part would be uh, logging into Google. Obviously you need a Google account, so you would log into Google. Um, uh, you can go to uh, cloud.developers.google.com. In the cloud platform you have to agree to certain terms and conditions first. And that takes you to a point where you can then create a project. That there's, there's a default project it gives you called API project which uh, we're not going to use. Uh, so you can click on the API project name as it shows you on the slide here and that takes you back to a screen where all the projects are listed and you can create a new one. So that's the second step. First step is logging in. Second step is to create a project. Now when you're creating a project, there's certain information which it needs. Firstly, it might take you through a process where you need to do SMS verification of your account. So you might need to put a, uh, a mobile phone number in. Uh, the second part is where you configure the project name. It's a little bit uh, fussy on the naming conventions which you use, but uh, I found upper and lower case um, alphas and numerics and spaces are fine. The project ID, it makes one up for you. You have to have a unique project ID. Um, so if you don't like the look of the one it gives you, just hit that uh, refresh button in the box and it'll give you another one. And again, uh, agree to the appropriate terms and conditions. That creates your project. Uh, now there's, there are two bits of information you need to keep from that project which we'll need later when we're configuring the DataSift platform to be able to send the data to Google BigQuery. What I do is I just copy this project ID and project number that I've circled here, paste those into a text file so we can use them later. Within any project you have to configure billing. Uh, so the, the project that we've created could have multiple BigQuery data sets in it. So you could do all of your Google BigQuery work in one project if you wanted to. If you wanted to split up the billing, uh, then you could create multiple projects with different billing for each one. So one of the uh, steps you'll need to go through before you're able to start creating data sets is to enable billing. Um, so you can click on the project itself, as you can see in the example here, go to settings and click on enable billing. And if you don't already have any billing information configured, uh, you can then put in credit card details. 
So what I'll do now is run through a demonstration of um, how to review the attributes of a project that you've created, um, configure authentication information which will be required by the Datasift platform and then configure a data set. That's all we need to do in Google BigQuery, then we're in a state where we're ready for the Datasift platform to send data to it. So if I open my web browser here, uh, you can see I've, uh, I'm in my projects and in projects I have a project called demonstration which is the one I'm using for this. So I'll click on demonstration. So here are the two bits of information that I want to keep first, the project number and project ID. So I'm going to copy those and I'm going to paste those into a notepad so I can use them later. Okay, so that's the project information and I've already set up billing for this for this one too. The next step is to configure uh, authentication details. So I'll click on APIs and Auth and I'll go to Credentials. Now I've already created a set of credentials because I've already used this project with uh, Datasift but I'll go through the process of creating another set. So what you would need to do when you have your new project is click this Create New Client ID button uh, there are three choices here for the application type of the, the, the client service which is going to connect to Google BigQuery. The one we're using is a service account. So select service account and click, click create client ID. And what's happened here is it's created uh, a public private key pair which has a passphrase called not a secret. So that not a secret I want to write down. So I'll go back to my notepad here, passphrase not a secret. Okay, and it's prompting me immediately to download a file. So um, this is a, a .p12 file and this is a private key file. So I'm just going to save this in the directory I happen to be in here. Uh, I'll click OK, got it. So this has given me uh, new authentication information. I've got a client ID, an email address, and this fingerprint. Again, this is information that I'll need, or I'll need some of this information when I'm configuring Datasift. So I'm going to copy those, go to my notepad, and just paste those in. There we go. That's all I need to do there. Now I can go down on the left-hand side here and click Google BigQuery. That opens a new tab in my browser, which takes me into the data sets I have in this project. Now, I already have two data sets because I've already been using this project for demonstrations, but I'll show you what you would do if this project were new and didn't have any data sets in it. So I can click on this drop down here and go to Create New Data Set, and I'll call mine Demo 3. So here's my Demo 3 data set, and at the moment there's nothing below that. If I click on this, I don't get any tables, whereas my previous data sets already have tables in. Ignore this content that's on the right here. This is just where I've been making queries against tables I created a couple of days ago. So Demo 3 is the data set that we're going to be using. So I'll go to my notepad here, and I'll just write down data set is Demo 3. So I've got all the information I need to configure uh, the Datasift platform all in that text file now. The next step is to configure Datasift to be able to talk to Google BigQuery. So I'll run through a demonstration again. We'll add a new destination in the web application. We'll uh, create a filter and start recording it. And in the recording, we'll define Google BigQuery as the destination. Then we can go back to the Google BigQuery console and we should be able to see the, um, the database table being constructed and data being added to it. Then we can have a go at querying the database through the Google BigQuery console itself. And we could use Tableau desktop software to be able to connect to the database as well and give us uh, better visualizations of the data. So back in my web browser, I'm going to go to my uh, Datasift account dashboard and go to Data Destinations. In Data Destinations, I want to add a new Google BigQuery destination, so I'll click the plus sign on here. And now we need to fill in the appropriate uh, fields on this form. Now The label is just for me, so I can create any kind of uh, description that I want to have here. So I'll just call it Demo3 Destination. The table ID is the name of the table that it will create in our data set. 
So it's not something that's already created and we have to reference. This is going to be a new name. So I'll call this demo3-table. The data set ID is the data set name that we created. So if I go back to my Google BigQuery console, we called our data set demo3. Now the project ID is actually the project number. So if I go back to my text file where I had um, stored all this information, this project number is the one that we want. So I'm going to copy that, go back to my browser and paste and paste that in. The authentication details or authorization details that we need are the ones that we created. So I have a client ID and a service account email address. Let me go and copy and paste those. So there's my client ID and paste that in and my service account email address. I'll go copy that and paste that one in as well. And then the P12 file, that private key file that it asked me to download in my Google Drive. Here we go. So there's my key file and then I can click Test Connection. And I've got a, a, an error status returned when I did the Test Connection button. I know what that is. In the table ID I've used a dash and I can't use dashes in a table ID. So let's try that connection again without the dash. There we go, we've got an OK status from a test connection, so I'll click Create and Activate. And there's our new Demo3 destination here. Now I can uh, create a new stream, so I'll click on Create Stream, I'll call it Starbucks. I'll create a very simple uh, CSDL stream, so interaction.content contains Starbucks and save and close and I'm going to go to tasks I'll create a new recording using the Starbucks filter I'll get it to start now and I'll get it to finish in a few hours time so let me go for or maybe in about half an hour's time which is there and click continue I can select my destination my new demo 3 destination and click continue again and it shows me a summary of my new recording and you can see here I've got my demo 3 destination Google BigQuery configured so I'll click start task. So here's my task called Starbucks this is active and so far it's 0% of the way through and I have zero interactions from it. I'll pause this recording and come back in five or ten minutes. Okay I've let this run for a few minutes and you can see now we've got 261 interactions in this job and it's still running, it's only 11% of the way through. If I go back to my Google BigQuery tab we can see now that Demo3 has a new table in it and this is the table name that we configured in the Datasift platform. If I click on Demo3 table we go. This is showing me the schema which is being used. So you can see it's already configured all the fields in the database for the uh, output fields of the of the interactions. I can click on details, and it shows me information. For example, I've got 272 rows, so that would be 272 interactions that have been matched by the filter and sent to this destination. And we've got the total table size here. I could create queries on the table, even though it's still running. I could create queries here so I've typed in, in uh, select interaction dot content uh, and a good tip here is that if you've typed in a valid field name then it'll turn it blue and while you're typing it in it stays black uh, from my table with a limit of a thousand so if I run that query here are all the interactions that we've got back. So this is just the first five. If I click on next and keep clicking next, you can see all the interaction content from the interactions which have been matched by my filter. So that's one example of running a query against the Google BigQuery database. A better way to visualize the interactions would be to use something like Tableau Desktop. So here I've got Tableau Desktop opened. I don't have any workbooks open. I'll click to connect to data and I'll go down to Google BigQuery. And here I just need to log in with the same Google account as I'm using in Google BigQuery and click sign in. 
and accept. Tableau Desktop goes to Google BigQuery and it finds all the projects that I have and data sets. So here's my demonstration project, here's my list of data sets. I won't use Demo 3 because that's, uh, that task is still running. I'll go for Demo 1, which is exactly the same filter, it's just looking for, star for Starbucks in interaction.content. And I can click the search button and it shows me all the tables that are available in that data set. So I'll pick the only table I have and I'll click OK. I'm given the choice here to import the data from Google BigQuery to my local machine or I could just connect live to the database which is what I'll do. And you can see on the left hand side we've now got all these output fields and some of them it's defined as measures and some as dimensions. Let me show you a quick example of creating a, a, a Tableau visualization. If I take the geo information from tweets, so twitter.geo.latitude and twitter.geo.longitude and then find Twitter ID from this list and drop that into detail and select the map type. I just need to drag Twitter ID back onto detail and there you can see it's showing me the location of where all the tweets about Starbucks coffee have come from where the interaction had geo information included in it and I could zoom into these and there's lots of other information I can add through Tableau desktop I could change the size of the circles or the colors based on any of the measures which I have on the left hand side here. So that's just a quick example of configuring Google BigQuery with a project and a data set ready for information to be sent to it and we've configured the Datasift platform with the information it needs to send interactions to Google BigQuery and then I've shown you in Google BigQuery the table that's been created we can run a, a query directly against that table in Google BigQuery or we could use visualization software such as Tableau Desktop to be able to query that information as well.